This video is on the topic of carbon cycle. And this is for IB section 4.3. This is for the newest exam material starting in 2016. Carbon cycle is probably something that you've heard of. Uh, it's most often heard of in the news specifically about climate issues and climate change because a lot of that has to do with carbon. And in this section, we'll take a closer look at how carbon can actually influence climate uh, worldwide a little bit and look at some of the effects of this uh, in, our, in our next video of 4.4 and climate change. But in order to be able to understand why it's happening, we need to have a better understanding of the carbon cycle in general. Here's a nice image that represents what the carbon cycle is. Essentially, carbon cycles through different parts of the environment. Yes, you can find it in the atmosphere, but you can also find it in any organic uh, matter or organisms, for example, cows, uh, humans, uh, birds, for example, all are made of carbon, so they would be considered organic um, organisms, organic material. You can also find carbon through carbon dioxide in water, in various forms of rocks, and also preserved as coal, oil, and gas, some forms of carbon that we use very frequently. In looking at this cycle a little bit closer, autotrophs, or uh, plants that are using uh, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, sometimes bacteria as well, convert that CO2 into carbohydrates, lipids, and other organic molecules that then other organisms come along and consume. That's how we, for example, get our energy um, by eating uh, either autotrophs or producers or eating something that has gotten their energy from an autotroph. In the atmosphere, about 390 uh, parts per million, or 0.039% of the atmosphere is made up of CO2. And this uh, level has actually changed. It's been going up quite uh, dramatically in the last couple of years, last couple of decades. Um, and most recent um, measurements, uh, primarily from the Mauna Loa uh, site in Hawaii, have uh, indicated that it's over the 400 parts per million mark, uh, which is way higher than what it has been ever in the past uh, since we've been able to record these values. Um, the cycle of carbon um, is maintained by the fixation of gas during photosynthesis, so the taking in of CO2 and conversion of it to sugars, and the release of CO2 by respiration, combustion, and decay. Uh, so the biggest problem that we'll get into and talk about more with carbon cycle is um, this, this balance has become unbalanced. Um, the rate at which carbon dioxide gets fixated from the atmosphere uh, is not able to keep up with the, the, the rate at which carbon dioxide is being released out into the atmosphere, primarily through combustion. Let's take a closer look at carbon dioxide specifically. It is soluble in water, meaning it can be broken down um, in water. And it's uh, absorbed by autotrophs, as previously mentioned, to produce carbon compounds, usually through photosynthesis. It's made of a carbon atom and two oxygen atoms, and so the carbon and the oxygen are electronically balanced, um, sharing of electrons. And the carbon dioxide is also released by cellular respiration. So when an organism performs cellular respiration, respiration it releases carbon dioxide out of the system and out and in, usually into the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide could remain as a dissolved gas, or it can also form carbonic acid uh, in water, which can disassociate to form hydrogen and hydrogen carbonate ions and this can cause changes, um, specifically a decrease in pH. And as we get more into climate change, keep tying back to climate change, but this is very much associated with that topic, um, we'll see that changes in pH for marine organisms uh, could be a, a major problem moving forward. Both carbonic acid and CO2 is absorbed by aquatic organisms, um, can be absorbed by aquatic organisms. And CO2 by respiration um, in marine organisms, at least, uh, diffuses out of the cells and passes um, from the water out into the atmosphere, or if it's a, a land-based, terrestrial-based organism, will just diffuse out into the atmosphere. Associated with carbon dioxide is another type of greenhouse gas, gas called methane, and it's produced from organic matter in anaerobic conditions, so this would be conditions that, that don't have oxygen present. Um, methane actually stays in the atmosphere for quite um, uh, quite a few years, about 10 to 12 years, um, but it can actually be naturally oxidized in the stratosphere. And so this ensures and is one of the reasons why we see such low levels of methane in the atmosphere is because it's actually broken down over 
a 10 to 12 year period. And so the process of how, the, how it actually gets produced is bacteria convert organic matter into organic acids, alcohol, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide. Orga organic acids and alcohol are used to produce acetate, CO2, and hydrogen. And then archaeans, which are somewhat similar to bacteria, use CO2, hydrogen, and acetate to produce methane. And so methane is a gas. It can be collected and used um, as a means of a gas to be able to power uh, a variety of different functions. Um, this often takes place uh, uh, in mud along the shores of lake beds, swamps, mangrove forests, and wetlands. Uh, also even in termite guts and uh, uh, some different mammals, cows and sheep, and also landfill sites. Um, landfill would be like a garbage site, garbage piling on top of one another. Over time, that actually can start to release methane. Peat formation is actually a type of, um, uh, not a type of soil, but a type of land that you can find um, in various locations throughout the world. Um, and it's formed through sapotrophs, um, usually digest dead organic matter when oxygen is present. So these would be like decomposers. They're breaking down the dead organic matter. In some situations, if there is so much water present um, and it's unable to be drained out of the soils, uh, it creates an anaerobic condition. Oxygen's not able to get in because water is is, is, is consuming that whole space. And so then this prohibits the sapotrophs, the decomposers, from being able to survive. What this then leads to, because all of that organic matter is just sitting there, is acidic con conditions develop, which further inhibit sapotrophs from being able to function and to survive. And then it creates large quantities of this partially semi-decomposed organic matter, and it compresses and builds upon one another to form this dark brown kind of grossness and it's very acidic and it's called peat and actually about three percent of earth's surface is covered by peat. Transitioning back to looking more specifically at CO2, CO2 is often released into the atmosphere through the process of combustion and that's the oxidation of organic matter once reaching ignition temperature in the presence of oxygen. So oxygen's presence, um, it basically ignites and then burns that organic matter. And you could think of this as easily as um, putting a log on the fire. If oxygen is present and that fire is already established, that log will continue to burn. In doing so, that releases CO2. This actually does occur natu uh, naturally. Um, forest fire would be a great example. Forest fires are a natural process um, and actually help many different species in order to, uh, to be able to survive and to be able to reproduce. Various types of trees depend on forest fires in order to be able to spread their seeds. Um, and many organisms are adapted to forest fires. Unnatural causes would be like clearing of the rainforest or burning forests um, to clear land for whatever, uh, maybe livestock or crops. Um, the use of fossil fuels in cars or factories would also be unnatural uh, examples of combustion. So that releases carbon dioxide out into the atmosphere. Uh, coal would also be an example of, of a um, organic material that is combusted in order to provide energy, but then also releases CO2 into the atmosphere. And so this is really the cause of what's throwing that balance that I mentioned earlier uh, out of sync. Um, the photosynth photosynthetic organisms, the autotrophs on the planet, are not able to process the amount of CO2 that's in the atmosphere as fast as it's being released. And so we've gotten to a point where there's now a lot more and too much CO2 in the atmosphere in comparison to what levels have been much in the past. The creation of limestone, which actually represents about 10% of all sedimentary rock, um, is formed through the uh, breakdown and combination of oftentimes marine organisms. Uh, mollusks and other hard corals use calcium carbonate in order to build their shells or their uh, their they're solid structures. Here's some examples of different corals. They use calcium carbonate in order to build their skeleton. Uh, here's a mollusk, and the shell would be, would be built out of calcium carbonate. When these organisms die, the soft parts, the non-calcium carbonate parts, decompose, and that then leaves the, um, the, the harder portion that's made out of calcium, calcium carbonate. And it will actually dissolve in acidic conditions. In neutral or alkaline conditions, hard parts from the seabed uh, or in a shallow tropical area can be deposited and precipitated to form limestone, 
rock. Um, and this is usually visible as fossils. Uh, and so what that happens is this gets built up. Um, this calcium carbonate gets built up and it can eventually form lime, limestone. Why changes in climates and changes in carbon dioxide is a big, big issue for many marine organisms is because um, changes in pH uh, can affect the ability of, this, of, of calcium carbonate can actually cause them to dissolve in acidic conditions as previously mentioned. And so if the pH changes, it basically stops or prohibits many organisms from being able to survive. To finish up this video, I suggest doing a little practice by drawing out a carbon cycle that would include all of these different uh, components or different portions and see if you can identify where all of these would fit into the overall car carbon cycle. In our next video, we'll discuss climate change in further detail.